Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Podium Stories. Today we have a very special guest in the building. You might have seen him on Twitter and the content he puts out. I know you have put out on newsletter as well. Uh, Alexander is the CEO and founder of Lemon.io. Uh, uh, they're an ex- exclusive platform for hiring vetted freelance developers on demand. They help connect early stage startups with um, vetted engineers and developers. Alexander, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so just to give our audience a bit more context um, on Lemon, can you tell us a bit more about what you guys do and, and the services you guys provide? So um, Lemon IO is a marketplace of vetted engineers, as you said. Um, what we do is when engineers want to work with us, um, we test and, each, and interview each of them and um, we put them in a database. And when the client is, is looking for an engineer, we just offer them someone who is already in the database and have been checked and into with us. Uh, we work, majority of engineers are located in Ukraine at the moment. We're gonna expand to, uh, expand to new countries in uh, Eastern Europe and probably then we'll go to, to Latin America. I gotcha. Uh, Cause you're based in Ukraine right now? Yeah, yeah how's I'm it here been? in Kiev. I, I love it. Uh, I'm originally from Spain. Uh, I was wondering how's it been for you to work uh, internationally from uh, the Ukraine and from Europe, um, have, have you seen that it's an interesting transition to work with companies, I'm guessing across Europe and, and some of the United States, or how has that been to that process for you? Um, Ukraine has a, uh, um, has a history of outsourcing. Uh, so of, of course it's not uh, India. So mm-hmm. India is, is, is the largest, I think, outsourcer, but it's still large. There are a lot of companies who have um, uh, R&D, um, um, departments over here and like there are a lot of major major uh, outsourcing companies like people you know companies with 4,000 people in their teams uh, so it was uh, it was no-brainer um, you know Ukraine was known as, as a country of, of good engineers and uh, it was yeah it was, it was pretty easy I hear you um, and correct me if I'm wrong but I said before Lemon uh, you founded uh, Coding Ninjas <clears throat> Uh, in 2015 with the idea to build an Uber for web development, uh, but did you eventually pivot it to Lemon? Can you tell us a bit more about uh, what were the obstacles that you faced uh, with coding ninjas and, and why did you think that a rebrand towards Lemon and maybe a bit of a different business model was necessary? Right, so uh, yeah, coding ninjas was the same company. I was, uh, I uh, in uh, 2014, I moved to Israel and uh, Israel is a very expensive country to live, I think, even more expensive than the U.S. So, yeah, I was working for an Ukraine outsourcing company. I was helping them to, um, to, to build sales in Israel. But, uh, you know, I, could, I, I was taking any extra opportunity to work. <laughs> and there's someone who asked me to find a freelancer. Uh, and I did it. And they then, you know, they were very happy with it because, you know, they were, they were working on a small project. It was a one-person agency. Um, and they were so happy with us, so they, you know, they referred all their uh, all their friends to me, and uh, it was a side hustle at the moment. But you know, through the time working with them, I, I realized there is a market opportunity. So at that time, we wanted to be an Uber, as you said, an Uber for web development projects, um, with the with a sense of um, like right before that, uh, we thought that like you. To, to do a small project, let's say you, you want to you fix something or you, you need to develop a landing page or you need to add some fun- functionality, you would go to Upwork or similar platforms, you would request work, you would have to spend at least from, I don't know, from two days to, to sometimes to two weeks to find a person and to, go, you know, to talk to all of them. You get like, I don't know, dozens of bits and you have to talk to all of them and make sure, you know, you, ch- you, you get the right choice. Uh, so what we wanted to do is, is like Uber style. You come, you post a project, and then someone picks it up. Like a driver pick, picks up the, right. the, the right, you know, the same we wanted to do with the web development. Of course, all the developers had to be pre-vetted, and, uh, and there there's, had to be a lot of, you know, service on the back end. Um, and we thought it's going to work. You know, we, wanted, we thought it could be a real revolution because before that you spend like two days or two weeks to, to find developers start a project now it was a matter of hours and we could do that but it worked on only on the small scale uh on bigger scale it was a problem first of all there's a, a very large human factor um 
you know, people who come to work on the small projects, you know, they, um, uh, first of all, it's really hard to small, to work on small projects. Why? Because, um, if you're, if you're, um, if you're taking a project that you didn't work before, probably you don't know the code. So it takes you, to, you know, some time to, to get onboarded, but also because, you know, there are so many people who work on the, who, who work on the website before, uh, you know, there are so many problems in this code. There's so many styles of this code. So sometimes we work mostly with WordPress. So sometimes developer would do something and he would break something else. Something else not break. because, yeah, not, not because he's a bad developer, just because there's, you know, so, so much history with this, with this website. And we, we had a lot of, you know, websites who were on WordPress. And if you know WordPress, you know, you can use plugins over there. There is pre-built yeah. functionality. So people would add a, a add a, uh, plugin for anything literally anything and because there are so many plugins you know the website would just crash um, so to do that on scale we would have to not only prevent engineers but also prevent the websites and not let in the websites that are bad or you know offer them to rebuild those websites but this is already too many operations at the time that we were trying to figure this out uh, we um, were getting more and more projects or full-time developers so the client would request not the small project of 20 hours or one hour, but, you know, we need someone for 40 hours a week or we need someone for 20 hours a week. Um, it was obvious that we were making more money over there and it was much easier because we didn't have to manage them so much. But, uh, I, you know, still I was trying to, to fight it because in finding full-time and part-time development, there is very, very little um, innovation you can do. Right. And... And a lot of this was already done by companies like TopTal. Like TopTal really um, did a revolution over there by, you know, having um, uh, developer testing on scale and, you know, bringing such an amazing community. Uh, so I, I didn't want to enter the market where we were like, you know, me too. It was not even me too. It was like me a hundred, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, and like, and what we do, you know, we can grow over there and we're growing right now, but there is no real innovation over here. And with Coding Ninjas, I thought this is a real evolution because it's a real problem. Even with, the, with existing Upwork and Freelancer and Guru.com, there's still a huge pain to finding those freelancers and managing those freelancers. So I was trying to fight those pivot, but at some point I just realized that, and I didn't realize it. I'm, I'm kind of a blind person. If I'm going, I'm going. Right. But my, my, my co-founder, he said, like, look at this. Look at the numbers. Like 90, I'm not sure that exactly 90, but it was somewhere around 90% of our revenue came from this already larger projects. And he said, you know, we just have to stop it. You, you cannot fight it anymore. There are no more arguments to do that. Right. So, um, you know, and after that, we saw that, okay, we have... Uh, we at least have to niche down. And we thought that when we decided to work with early stage startups, but that a lot of companies don't care about, um, we decided that Coding Ninjas is not a proper brand for that. And we rebranded and pivoted and, you know, and renamed also. I love that. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting that, you know, you had this idea and as a founder myself, like our business is like a baby, right? Like we, we love that idea. Like, and nothing else in the world. Um, what would you say to a founder who, you know, who the idea maybe is not working, but he doesn't want to quit with the idea. Maybe he's falling in love with the idea. At what point do you think, hey, if maybe you need to pivot or you, or you need to start something else? Because um, I think it's a challenge a lot of founders have, right? And you, it seems like you face that challenge and eventually you moved on to other founders in that situation, at what point do you think, hey, it's time to move on? You know, at the point that you're not motivated to do this anymore. Um, right. yeah, th there's a fine line between pivot and quit. Right, that's so, the problem, right? Uh, now, you, there's, um, there's a question of like, how do you want to spend your time? Because there's so much time we have, right? right? There's just only whatever, um, 40 years of, 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 of time you want to do work, right? And there's only uh, eight hours a day, you know, if you're a psycho like me, you know, you have more time, but yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So like, how do you want to spend your time? And if you want to spend time doing this, even if, you know, if, if it's not working, do this. If you're feeling that it's not working and you're not motivated to do that, uh, don't do this. Now, right. pivot, pivot is, is a very, um, pivot is a very broad, um, broad, uh, term. Now you could pivot by going with a little slight pivot, or you can say, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying something else. So it's, it's a very fine line. You, you're right. I, I, I don't know how to do, to give advice. I don't want to give advice that is bad, but, uh, I, I knew that I didn't want to quit, quit, even though like I had a lot of people who I um, who I worship, who I look up to, saying that this is not a good business, you're wasting your time, and um, you know you're not gonna win, and it doesn't look like you want to spend time on this. But I still did it, and I, I don't know like if I was wrong, right or wrong, because it's still you know right. to figure out. But I loved what that we do very much, and I still love. I love my team like very much love the team we, that we built and and we get so many signals that it's working that i decided okay i at first I, I decided that let me let me give this another like three months and then six mm -hmm. months and now i think okay let me give this another like couple of years and let's see and you know we're we're winning a little bit like yeah. i mean not winning the market but winning inside our of course <laughs> a little um little wheel we're winning like we're doing like milestone by, by milestone. We'll see. We'll see. It looks very interesting. But if you have motivation, do this. If you, you know, feeling that you burned out, um, why do that? Why, why, why waste your time on something you don't believe in or something you're already exhausted of? Yeah, I think we as founders are very competitive, right? So like that feeling of like, maybe if I try three more weeks, I'm going to be able to figure that out. Um, it, it can extend forever. Uh, so it's very interesting to hear, to hear your perspective on that. Um, I read in an article of yours. Uh, one, 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 one more thing is um, that I heard on the Murphy Smilin podcast um, uh, earlier uh, that I don't remember the term, but there are sometimes you're doing things just because you're doing them, and this is a this is a this is a spot. And I realized for myself this spot you don't want to be. And there are people that are doing things just because they're doing them, and uh, this is where you don't want to be. If you're not if you're not psyched, if you're not hyped there's no reason to do that because yeah, like you said we only have a certain number of hours a certain number of years that we can invest into different things right so there's the opportunity right. cost of doing something we don't want to do. right and and opposite to um opposite to investing for example you could invest in, in many things but when you're a founder you you have one bet yeah and this is the scariest thing and usually you you take this bet through i don't know from three years or to i don't know 10 years 15 years and you can do only like few bets in your life <laughs> right right so what do you want to bet this is a question that's a good question that's a good question for sure and even when we pick the right bet it's not always perfect right i read on your 2020 year in the Rio that um it had been a very uh, tumultuous uh year of your life turbulent year in your life um can you tell us a bit more about you know like the the things that usually people don't see. And I know you're very transparent uh, with, with, with things that are going on in your life and your business. But can you tell us about like those moments in 2020 that were maybe a bit uh, complicated and then how, what you had to do to come on the other side of that? Um, 2020 was complicated in a way, but 2020 was, was very, um, a year where you learned a lot. And I don't, I don't know if um, it was a very difficult year. I mean, I, I don't want to say it's, it was it was easy year, but I, I did, it was it was not dif that difficult for me. I mean, in retrospect, uh, retrospect, um, if you if you look if you look back, I'm sorry for my English. Uh, <laughs> no man, I, 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 I'm not English speaking either. Retrospect, yeah, yeah. So, um, it was few moments that was very hard, and you know, you wanted, I wanted to quit. And do something else, um, but in reality, for us, it was a very exciting year. We um, uh, we you know introduced a new brand, and because of that, we had so much support from the community, so much support from different people. Like I got emails from people that I wouldn't be able to reach via email, 
and they emailed me via, via LinkedIn saying like, wow, such an amazing brand, such an amazing copy, uh, design and everything, blah, blah, blah. So for us, it was kind of winning. We didn't grow that much um, because in by July, we've lost something like, I think 40% of our client base. But through the year, we grew 40% and we added, I think, another 25% of revenue. Uh, so it was it was a, a okay uh, okay year in terms of growth, but in terms of um, team and how we feel and how we, you know, our um, you know our goals, uh, you know, we're very looking up to to twenty twenty one and uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, one of the things that I want to talk to you about, Alexander, was about uh, you know the building in public movement. Um, just for sure. some context, we my agency helps um, build personal brands. So I'm very in the movement in terms of like from an outside perspective. Um, I, I would love to hear more about like, I, I don't even know if you want to call it building the public, but being radically transparent. At what point where did you decide that, you know, building the community on Twitter, putting out the newsletter was something important for you and that you wanted to really allocate a, a lot of your time into? Yeah, so, um... I was looking for, um, I, at some point, uh, I was looking for places to grow uh, the company, the uh, the marketing side, and um, we didn't have much, we didn't have much uh, success with paid channels. So I was trying to see like, what are their non-paid paid channels? And also like if in, in market, I don't know, like in other businesses, but in marketplaces, if you if you get on the, on the, on the paid train, you, you get addicted and there is like very hard, there's, it's very hard to, to, to get off. So I was always looking to find like scalable channels that are not paid. And uh, someone, you know, I was in the mastermind and, uh, and uh, over there I met good friends and they suggested to try to build it public. I didn't do this right away. I did a newsletter. It was like a few people reading and I didn't pay attention much to this. And they said, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. And I didn't do Twitter at the beginning. I, I'm not very fond of social. Uh, I, it's uh, very exhausting and like writing in general for me was very hard. But I came, you know, at, at some point I came around, started, started writing. I also um, uh, bought the course from Neville Medora uh, called Copywriting Course. And over there, they not just teach you how to write, but also they have a forum where you can post any pieces of your uh, copy and they will help you to improve it, criticize, you know, give you... Uh, give you remarks and uh, actually help you to, 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 to improve the copy. I still use it. I'll use it already for a year. So I, I came around, I started using Twitter and it didn't grow at the beginning, but last month it was an amazing growth. I, I think I grew from um, something like, I'm not, I'm not sure, but probably something from 50 K uh, views per month up to right now. I think it's like 2 million views per month or something. What, what do you think was the change or the inflection point? Was it just consistency? Was it a couple of things going viral? Or, or there were a few things that, changes? yeah, there, there is a few threads that went viral. Viral for me is like, um, is like around 500, I'm sorry, 500,000 uh, views. Um, but also consistency because what I saw that, but before that it was for me being comfortable writing. Because before that, I was like trying to be like very smart and trying to, okay, I'm not going to post this. This doesn't look good. This doesn't, you know, looks too controversial. And then I said like, you know, to hell, like, let me write whatever I want to write about and like, let me share and let me not care about likes and retweets and everything. I actually learned a little bit. Like I, I, uh, I, I, I watched a few, um, tutorials how to do better like what are the better times what are the better formats um, um there is um this amazing guy um uh, julian um uh, shapiro who is a marketer and uh, he wrote an amazing tutorials on twitter um and uh, and consistency and me being comfortable me being interested so i got interested in twitter because for, before that i was like okay i can post but um, I was not interested in like communicating over there, but right now it's uh, for me, it's like number one channel to consume information, first of all. 
uh, number one channel to grow my network. Uh, and like, there's a lot of happening in DMs. I, I get, I, I speak with a lot of other entrepreneurs and uh, investors and uh, like yeah, community is amazing. People are very open and they are like answering and advising and asking and it's it's amazing so for me it was a shift of like just accepting twitter as as another channel um yeah do you ever worry about um failing in public so uh, when we're building in public right that when things are going great it's awesome because everybody's congratulating you but you've been very clear on your goals for the year uh, do you ever think that if you don't achieve those goals because you're building in public, does that, does that scare you at all? Or it's just another source of motivation or it's just part of the whole process up and down. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know what? Um, I, I get an answer with a, with a story. I went to, um, I went to San Francisco two years ago, two and a half years ago we were like wanted to hang out and we had like questions do we want to keep working on transactional business and coding ninjas or we, we we or should we switch to um switch to another model so we had a meeting with uh, uh 500 startups uh, partner um and he told us this like do this and you, if you fail do another thing like no one gives a shit about you like no one literally knows you and not gonna know you for a long time and if you fail once you fail twice you fail three times like, un unless you're stealing and you know and you you know committing fraud or something no one gonna remember you like there's so much like because i surrounded myself with a tech bubble on twitter like it's so easy to see like how the topics of rise and fall right there's like right now everyone talks about clubhouse like clubhouse every second tweet is clubhouse Next day is um, everyone is speaking how, I don't remember like the topics. Like like, NFTs or whatever. Yeah, yeah NFT. Yeah, but NFT is a, is a, long, is a longer um, hype. But something like very like yesterday, everyone is talking about uh, Gumroad rising uh, 5 mil, right? Like tomorrow, they're not going to talk about you. They're, they're not going to talk about this. So I am a small fish right now. And if I don't get to 10 mil, I will just say like, I didn't get there and this is my learnings. And people will be like applauding me for, for this learnings, right? People love applauding on Twitter. That's the beauty they, of they that. They really do. They really yeah. do. So if I say like, this is me failing and this is what I learned, that will you know, probably create even more hype to, to, to be, to, to, to drive more awareness to the brand. So yeah, I don't yeah. care. Like, I don't care what people say. I, I very, like, I was very protective at the beginning when people like, you know, trying to shit on me. But right now it's like, there's someone I was, I was, I wrote a, a thread about like uh, how, uh, about hiring and like how we have like different processes and like how we hire slow and like we take time and we do a lot of tests and, and, you know, and, and et cetera. And there's some, one person came to me, not, not came to me, like, um, commented saying like, uh, you must be American because this looks, uh, disgusting. <laughs> and I wrote back them, like, it, it doesn't even look disgusting. It also tastes disgusting. So <laughs> yeah, no, no picking fights and on Twitter. Uh, it's, uh, it, it doesn't matter. Like, yeah. Yeah. No one gives a fuck about you. It's probably the best. Sentence yeah. I've heard on my podcast ever. Yeah. Um, I have one last the, question, Alexander, before the, we go. The minute you realize, yeah, Sorry, the minute you the minute you realize this, it's not about Twitter. The minute you realize that no no one gives a shit about you, they they only care about themselves, and there are very few people who will be stalking you and trying to make your life miserable. You have to just block them. But and you know, other than that, no one cares about you, and you have to accept it. If you accept it, your life becomes becomes so much easier. So much easier. You stop right. caring about so much stuff and you like all that noise is 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 not touching you anymore and you have more time and and most important not even time but if it you have you have you you have more attention to 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 the things because we have also attention is also limited time is limited but attention is also even more limited because sometimes if you if you if you see yourself like switching between tasks and you can switch in time, just say, okay, now I'm working on something else, but it takes you so much time to switch your attention to, 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 
right to move your attention from one project to another project so attention you have so much more attention when you when you accept that you know no one gives a shit about you and, and it gives a lot of freedom as well right yeah, uh, yeah. for not having to care about what other things yeah uh, Alexander, I think we could go for hours, but I, I really appreciate your time um, coming on the podcast. Um, sure. This was a huge pleasure. We're going to put yeah, the for links for your Twitter, your newsletter, and Lemon as well. Is there anything else that you'd like us uh, for listeners to reach out to you or, or that works for you? Yeah, that works. That works for me. Uh, if anyone signs up, uh, I'm my DMs are open on Twitter. I'm very open to, to different conversations. Uh, and uh, my newsletter, I, I I failed to be consistent newsletter. I I missed uh, last week, and this week I, I think I will post something that uh, went really well on Twitter um, because I didn't have time. But yeah, um, my, I I'm open to chat there. And uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna release um, a um, tutorial about how to build a brand mm -hmm. based on our experience. That should yeah. be very interesting. I love that. Love to hear and cannot wait. Alexander, thanks again so much for your time and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye.